VOA TV4 Tucson. Live from TV4, where the news comes first. Jimmy Stewart and Kathy Ryan. This is Eyewitness News Daybreak. Good morning. Thanks for joining us today. Hope you all had a great weekend. Today is Monday, the 13th of July. I'm Kathy Ryan. And I'm Jimmy Stewart. We have 66 degrees in Tucson this morning. That's just one, one degree away from a record low which was set back in 1960. And there's a possibility we could hit it, although about uh, oh, 20, 30 minutes ago, we were at 65.9, we're now at 66.3. We try to be exact around here. <laughs> Humidity, and when you take 65.9, you round it off to the nearest. So it's 66, that's our lowest so far this morning. Humidity is 61%. Uh, Look for partly cloudy skies today. Just a little bitty slightly chance of getting some thunder showers late this afternoon, but just a slight chance. 98 are expected high here in Tucson today. Topping our news this morning, thousands of Democratic delegates get down to business today at the party's convention in New York. The stage is set, the balloons in place, the band in tune, and the activists are protesting. All the makings of a successful convention. Almost 50 of the 4,100 delegates are on hand are from Arizona, 13 from Tucson. Last night, they got a chance to play a little in the Big Apple. For a lot of people who have worked for the party for a long, long time, this is a reward to get to go to the national convention. And for most people who become delegates, it's the high point of their political career in life. So from that standpoint, yes, it's a morale building. It's fun for us because we've worked hard to get here. It's not like we hand this out as carte blanche. We all have to run and get elected by our peers to be a delegate. So we should also enjoy it as well. All the work begins today for Arizona's delegation. Meetings to attend, speeches to listen to, but no doubt they'll find some more time for a little more fun as well. Now this trip to New York isn't cheap, and the Arizona delegates are paying their own way so to keep costs down. They took a red-eye flight. They're staying at an older hotel in New York, and one delegate says they're staying away from $4 cups of coffee and taking advantage of free convention food. $4? <laughs> Even in New York? <laughs> Democratic Party Chairman Ron Brown is bubbling about his party's inevitable presidential nominees. Brown says that Bill Clinton and Al Gore are the ticket offering the country the change it needs. Uh, I think we've got an extraordinary ticket, a dream ticket, uh, it's, a, uh, it's a ticket that represents not only the best in America, uh, but represents a new generation uh, of political leadership for our country. No Brown says President Bush is the representative of the status quo and insists the appeal of Ross Perot will fade under closer inspection by voters. Well, it's not all peace and harmony at the Democratic National Convention. Former presidential candidate Jerry Brown is urging the party to consider a different platform. His so-called humility agenda calls for pay cuts for Congress and White House staff. However, party leaders say Brown won't be allowed to speak at the convention unless he endorses Clinton. After attending two international summits last week, President Bush is letting the Democrats take center stage. This weekend, he took it easy, playing golf and going to church. Tomorrow, he'll go to Major League Baseball's All-Star Game in San Diego, then go fishing with Secretary of State James Baker at Baker's Wyoming Ranch. President Bush's weekend in Maine wasn't quite as peaceful as he would have liked. Members of the AIDS activist group ACT UP held a demonstration outside his vacation home yesterday. The demonstrators say the president is spending too much time on foreign policy and not doing enough about the AIDS problem in the U.S. Basketball star Magic Johnson is also frustrated with President Bush's inaction on the AIDS crisis and says he'll probably resign from the president's commission on AIDS after the Summer Olympics. Meanwhile, Pepsi is starting a major promotional campaign featuring Johnson and will fund so-called magic playrooms for children with AIDS. Some problems for Ross Perot supporters here in Arizona. A meeting in Phoenix yesterday degenerated into a fight between various factions, including more clashes between members of the Tucson and Phoenix campaign organizations. People in grassroots Perot groups are upset about a decision to bring in professionals to run the campaign. Talk of bringing together city and county government is picking up some steam. County Supervisor Greg Lund wants to get the consolidation issue on the November ballot so residents can vote on it. He says merging government operations like law enforcement would be much more efficient and save money as well. 
It should be fairly easy to get the issue on the ballot, but even if it is approved, it'll take years to implement it. A wild weekend for weather across much of the U.S. Heavy rains in California led to a series of accidents that left seven people dead, dozens of people injured. In Salt Lake City, Utah, a violent thunderstorm deluged the city with two inches of rain in less than 90 minutes. Then folks spotted a tornado in Clearwater, Florida yesterday. Amazingly, no injuries or damage to report there. Isn't that scary? Good video. Um the home video things now you get all sorts of good video of weather exactly. phenomena. Yeah. Salt Lake City had a high yesterday of 74 degrees. It's their lowest high temperature on record for the date. So cool weather to Winslow was 78. That's also a record. Really? For that. But not a record high, but a record minimum high right. temperature. And um, cool weather to the north of us. We're going to stay fairly warm down here, but most of the rain is up in the northern part of the mm -hmm. state. We'll take a look in a second. Right now in Tucson, we have 66 degrees. That's just one degree from a record low. That's been our low so far this morning. There is a chance we could drop down to 65. Uh, humidity is 61% with a dew point temperature of 51 degrees or 52 degrees. Winds right now from the southeast to 9. The barometer is 30.01 and on the rise. High in Tucson yesterday was 96. Record high for today, 110 degrees. That was in 1989. And the record low in 1960 of 65 degrees. And sunrise this morning will be at 527. Sunset this evening at 732. Let's take a look at the satellite picture of the United States. And I can show you some action here in the southeastern corner. This is actually national radar. You can see thunder showers going through the uh, Midwestern and, uh, and Middle Plains area of the United States and also th some thunder showers into Indiana. And uh, down here, not a whole lot of action, but you can see some rain right in the northwestern part of Arizona. Over here in the Canyonlands uh, National Park in the eastern part of Utah, there have been some heavy thunder showers over the last 24 hours, although not showing so much here, but uh, there has been some flooding through that area. So we'll keep our eye on that whole system for you, and I'll try to show you um, the darkness of the nighttime sky. <laughs> <laughs> we'll uh, try to show you the satellite picture coming up in the next weather segment. Look for thunder shower activity across the northern one-third of Arizona today. There could be heavy rain. There's a little rain reported after midnight last night around Bullhead City. But across the northwest plateau and north of the Grand Canyon is where we're expecting the heaviest thunder showers. For the most part down here, partly cloudy skies. Uh, high temperatures here in the southeastern corner. Look for 98 in Tucson and 84 degrees in Sierra Vista and everybody else falling in between those numbers. Numbers. And the forecast for Tucson, partly cloudy skies. There's not much of a chance of getting any rain here today, although I'll mention just a very slight chance late this afternoon and this evening. 98 for a high today, 67 for a low this evening. We'll show you the travel forecast and the five-day forecast in about 15 minutes. Time now, eight minutes after six o'clock. Still to come for you in this half hour of the show, we'll show you a museum for kids by kids. And then in the second half hour, we'll take a we'll have a live report from Corey Warren at the Democratic National Convention in New York City. Plus, stay tuned for a travel report today. A ride to the top of the St. Louis Arch. Tough Shed says we're tough. We've smashed them, we've crashed them, and we've blown them away. Tough sheds are strong. Tough sheds are durable. Tough sheds are secure. Tough sheds are an excellent value. Why pay storage when financing is available? 8x8 to garage. We build it fast, and we build it tough. That's Tough Shed. Call 296-TOUGH. That's 296-TUFF today. During most of the 70s, all of the 80s, and now into the 90s, I've had the privilege of providing legal services to personal injury clients in Tucson. During this time, there have been many changes in the law, but some things never change. Every client has the right to personal attention and concern from an experienced lawyer. I'm Leighton Rockefeller. If you or a loved one have been injured and you think someone else is at fault, call the Rockefeller Law Firm. We will give you the personal attention and concern that you deserve. The Rockefeller Law Firm, lawyers you can depend on. We're talking superstar whose rhythm is going to get you. Gloria Estefan. How did that accident change your life? It really set my priorities straight. What did it teach you? It taught me a lot of things about love. And it's shy. Did you ever dream of it going this far? I didn't dream of it going at all. Get on your feet. Get on her feet. And that she did. Gloria Estefan on Christina. <laughs> Today at 9 a.m. on TV4. 
What would be the one thing that could make your summer perfect? How about free pizza? Because now it's free pie in July at Pizza Hut. Free pie in July. Get a free medium single topping pizza when you buy a large pepperoni lovers, meat lovers, or supreme pizza at regular price. Free pie in July. Free pie in July. What could be better? I don't think so. Free pie in July at Pizza Hut. Good morning, this is Daybreak. Welcome back. Get some Monday morning. Certainly feels like it. It's 11 after 6 now. Well, we have some good news for motorists today. A new survey finds that gas prices are going down. The average price per gallon dropped about three-tenths of a percent in the last two weeks. The decrease comes after three months of increases, and experts say it can be traced to the poor economy, which is keeping many people at home. Well, I've noticed that increase around here, haven't you? Well, especially over the holiday weekend. Remember that? That was awful. Well, maybe the next holiday weekend they'll be down somewhat. Let's take a look at stocks of local interest this morning. General Motors Hughes holds steady at 24 and one half. Southwest Gas is unchanged at 14 and five eighths. General Electric falls one and three eighths to 76 and three eighths. And Allied Signal rises seven eighths to 52 and five eighths. On Wall Street, the Dow starts the new week up about six points at 3330.56. Friday's uh, trading volume, pretty, uh, pretty low at 164 million shares. In London, gold starts the day up 65 cents a pound to $348.90. Silver is unchanged at uh, $3.94. And copper is up a penny. It'll open on the American market this morning at $1.13 a pound. Here's a word from Carpet One that's good as gold. Will you replace it if I don't like it in six months? Yes. Will you replace it if it doesn't match my furniture? Yes. Will you replace it if I want to redecorate in three months? Yes, that's our one word guarantee that's good as gold. We'll replace your carpet for any reason within one full year of purchase. Yes. The good as gold guarantee sale. If you're looking for carpet, look for Carpet One. The Cruise to Victory Contest. Win a Princess Cruise for two to the Mexican Riviera, provided by Bon Voyage Travel, or one of two other great prizes. Complete the entry blank available in the Tucson Citizen, your viewing guide to the Summer Olympics, and drop off your entry blank at any local Pizza Hut location. Then get ready for the 1992 Summer Olympics to begin on KVOA TV4. Cruise to Victory with TV4 and the Olympics. Brought to you by KVOA TV4, Bon Voyage Travel, the Tucson Citizen, and Pizza Hut. On the next Golden Girls. Blanche Devereaux's going on a diet. Could you hold off until tomorrow? I got some Sara Lee stock I'd like to unload. She's determined to lose weight. Are you sure it's worth it? But Rose gets the munchies. I said, where's my tuna quiche? You mean that little pie? And Blanche gets the crazies. You hate my sensible meal. You hate my sensible meal. Blanche! You're out of control. What did I just do? Yes! <laughs> Tonight at 6.30 on TV4. Good morning, 14 after 6 now. Welcome back to Daybreak. Oh, the talk lately, of course, has been about the Democratic Convention, but the NAACP members attended their own national convention in Tennessee yesterday. The biggest news, NAACP leader Benjamin Hooks announced he's going to retire. But as he stepped down, he left the group with something to think about. He told the convention, quote, upper and middle class blacks must help their brothers and sisters escape the crippling effects of poverty. A new poll says minorities feel the effects of discrimination here in Arizona. 55% of the minorities polled say police treat minorities worse than they do Anglos. 47% say the courts treat minorities unfairly. Overall, 45% of the minorities questioned say there is a great deal of racism in the state. Only 31% of the non-minorities polled feel the same way. Allegations of discrimination have kicked the University of Arizona into a new round of pom-pom tryouts. During the first tryout back in April, a few black students complained the selection process and the judging panel favors white women. The U of A says the judges choose the most talented women. The U of A has now opened up two more slots on the squad and added a member of the African American Studies program to the panel. Student athletes are gearing up for the fall season, but many of them may have to sit on the bench. For the third year, students in the Tucson Unified School District will have to pay to take part in after-school activities. 
Last year, the Educational Enrichment Foundation helped 900 students pay their fees, but the money has now run out. If you'd like to help out, you can contact the Educational Enrichment Foundation. That number is in the business section of your phone book. The head of Arizona schools is refusing to give up. The state legislature recently killed an education reform bill supported by C. Diane Bishop. Now Bishop is hoping a new committee will draw up another proposal. It would study deregulation and decentralization. Decentralization, for example, would give more decision-making powers to principals and to teachers. If you've ever taken a trip down to the Tucson Children's Museum, you know it isn't just for kids, but on any given day, you'll probably see the place packed with youngsters because, as Kristen Smith reports, the children do more than visit the museum. They help run it. One peek at Tucson's Children's Museum and you'll find things aren't so old inside. Over here, we have a, some equipment from a, for an airport fire. It's a museum dedicated to kids and, for the most part, run by them. And this thing right here, can you guess what this is? Right. Brian Yellett's a 12-year-old youth volunteer. He doesn't make any money here, but he's having a great time. There's two things that really wanted, made me want to do this. First of all, I, had, I got an idea that I might meet a lot of interesting people, which I have met a lot of interesting people. And second of all, I like to help people. Yellett's a big help to the museum, too. He and other teen volunteers give tours. This one is during the day, that one at night. Collect admission, and even provide extra entertainment. But the work isn't child's play. Volunteers apply, interview, and train for their positions. This is a place where you're supposed to learn about life. And one aspect of living is that you have to work. So the kids come down here and learn a lot about what it's like to have a job. This job's a whole lot of fun, and it's perfect for curious kids. Every time they change the exhibit, that uh, the exhibit period, I uh, learn a whole, new, a whole lot of stuff. It's like a whole lot of fun. And that's what childhood and this museum's all about. For Daybreak, Kristen Smith, TV4 Eyewitness News. If you'd like to volunteer at the Children's Museum, you can call 792-9985. Neat place. Oh, it's wonderful, isn't it? Take a look at sports now. Baseball takes its traditional three-day break for the All-Star game tomorrow night in San Diego. Plenty of action yesterday. The Cubs had lost three straight to Atlanta, had the bases loaded with no outs, and the game tied in the ninth and couldn't score. Jeff Blauser hit his third homer of the game in the top of the 10th, a three-run shot to win it for Atlanta 7-4. It's the time of the year when all of us Cub fans are thinking about that great phrase from Chicago, wait till next year. In Cincinnati, Barry Bonds hit a ninth inning, two out bases loaded triple to bring the Pirates even with Cincinnati. Then Gary Reedus pounded a two-run homer in the 10th to win it for Pittsburgh. Elsewhere, Houston beat the Mets. The Dodgers' Kevin Gross shut out the St. Louis Cardinals. San Diego scored five runs in the first inning and went on to top the Phillies, and the Giants shut out Montreal. In the American League, the A's' Ron Darling threw a two-hitter at Toronto. Boston shut out the White Sox. California edged De Detroit despite walking 13 Tiger batters. Detroit stranded 16 runners. The Seattle Mariners edged the Yankees. Kevin a Apier won his 10th game as Kansas City beat Milwaukee. Mark Witten slammed a three-run homer that lifted the Indians over Texas, and Minnesota outslugged the Baltimore Orioles. The Toros lost to the Phoenix Firebirds 5-3 out at High Corbett Field last night. Matt Turner took the loss for Tucson. He pitched just one-third of an inning in relief, but gave up four runs on three hits. The greatest work you'll ever do will be within the walls of your own home. And you can become more successful at it than ever with this free videotape titled Together Forever from The Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. Think about it. Is there anything in this world more important than your family? Be honest. And if you have a desire to strengthen the love in your home but haven't known how, let us send this free 30-minute videotape without obligation. Simply call toll-free 1-800-733-9400.
You'll discover how families can become happier and more unified, and you'll learn how to deal with many of the daily challenges you face. No matter what success or struggle you're having, this beautifully filmed free video cassette can help. So please call 1-800-733-9400 now for Together Forever, 1-800-733-9400. Were you abused, buddy? Yes. By who? By my kindergarten teacher. On the next Geraldo, school's out, but for some kids, it's the end of a prison term. They did bad things to my private parts. And they made me do bad things to their private parts. I was upset. I mean, he was invading, you know, my privacy. Where's the authorities? When abuse is in the lesson plan, school sex crimes next Geraldo. Join Geraldo today at 3 on TV4. What the? Oh, man. The bad thing about a leaking roof is it's not going to get any better by itself. So, before a small leak becomes a big problem, why not give us a call? Call Elias Construction Roofing at 882-4791, Tucson's roofing and skylight specialists. Good morning. Welcome back to Daybreak. Monday morning, it's coming up to 22 after 6. Right now, we'll take a look at our top international stories of the day for you. Mexico's ruling party concedes defeat at the polls. The defeat comes in yesterday's gubernatorial elections in the state of uh, Chihuahua. It is the first time that the 63-year-old Institutional Revolutionary Party, or PRI, has admitted defeat without a fight. The move is seen as a step away from election fraud in Mexico. A leadership change is nearly complete in Israel. New Prime Minister Yitzhak Rabin unveiled his new cabinet yesterday, just hours after the close of the last meeting by outgoing leader Yitzhak Shamir. Rabin's Labor Party defeated Shamir's Conservative Party in last month's elections. Let's take a look at health news now on this Monday morning. Keeping tabs on your cholesterol level is an important weapon in the battle against heart disease, but that level can vary widely from one test to another. Dr. Dean Adele reports on a new study that shows stress may be the culprit. Blue, green, red, yellow, green. Red, blue, red, yellow. Red, blue, sorry. Yellow, red. I got the last one wrong. <laughs> These nice, nice, nice cooperative folks in our sidewalk experiment are taking a popular stress test called the Stroop Effect. You're supposed to say the colors of the words, not the words themselves. But most people flub it and get a little uptight trying to figure it out. Well, researchers studying the effects of acute mental stress on cholesterol levels recently found that the Stroop test could significantly raise a person's cholesterol level. By the way, it didn't come down even within a half an hour of rest after the test. These same researchers also discovered that your cholesterol level can go up by as much as 22 points if the blood was drawn while you're standing up. The reverse is true if they draw the blood while you're lying down. The reason is when you stand up, your blood volume goes down and that concentrates everything in it. Well, these new results have some very important implications for how you monitor your cholesterol levels. With so many folks in the grip of cholesterol mania, getting it checked has gotten pretty casual. Whether we're talking about a cholesterol testing fair or a snappy little card that gives you almost instant reading. So to increase the chances for accuracy, you should keep the following in mind. First, make sure you sit down and rest about 20 minutes before you have your cholesterol levels tested. Remember, just standing up can raise those numbers. Also, try to schedule the test during a week when you don't have too much to do so you won't be too stressed out. Maybe right after a nice long vacation. I'm Dr. Dean Adele. Take a break from the news now and take a look at that weather out there. It was almost more like a springtime day. Earlier this morning, it was beautiful. And also, you can tell it's drying out because the temperature differences mm -hmm. are like 30 degrees again now. 96 yesterday, it was 66 for a morning low, at least so far. The record low is 65. We could drop one more degree and hit that. But so far, the low has been 66, our current temperature. Humidity is 61%. Dew point temperature is 52 degrees. Winds right now from the southeast at 9 and the barometer is 30.01, it's on the rise. High in Tucson yesterday was 96. So look at the satellite picture now of the United States. We can see some pretty good thunder showers going across, especially the upper Midwest. 
uh, around uh, flash flooding problems across parts of uh, Indiana and into uh, central part in eastern Ohio and also the northeastern part of Ohio. And also there have been some flooding problems around Nebraska and Kansas in that area with some very heavy thunder showers through those areas, anywhere from one to four inches of rain overall. Here is another hurricane developing out here in the Pacific. It's well to the south of us, and we do not, as of right now, expect any moisture. But look at how it's coming up a little bit closer to us and we're drying out somewhat in the southeastern part of the state and there have been some thunder shower activities up in the northern part of the state. We'll go to nighttime and back to daytime. Our, our our weather for today across the United States. Look at scattered thunder showers across the Midwest again, and some very heavy thunder showers through parts of Indiana and Ohio and into Pennsylvania and New York today. Sunny in the southeastern part of the country. There'll be some isolated thunder showers in the southern part of Florida, and some rain showers in Southern California today. They're expecting rain in San Diego and also in uh, Los Angeles today. Temperature-wise, southeastern part of the country very hot again, with the 100 showing up through parts of Georgia, Florida, and the Carolinas today, feeling more like a 115 or 120 with the humidity. Warm in the eastern part of Montana today, mostly in the 70s across the upper plains and the upper Midwest today. A little travel weather if you're going to be moving outside the state today. Uh, as I mentioned, rain in Southern California, only 92 in Las Vegas and partly cloudy skies over New Mexico. Best chance of rain is up in the northern one-third of uh, Arizona today. They could get some fairly heavy thunder showers up there. Here's the forecast for Tucson. Partly cloudy for the most part today. 98 for a high, 67 for a low tonight. And I am not showing any thunder showers in this five-day forecast. Now, they could redevelop toward the end of the week, but things have dried out a little bit. We look at temperatures going up during the daytime. As a result, a little lull in the monsoon for the next few days. Should be a good number of people heading over to San Diego for the All-Star Game. Yeah, it's uh, tomorrow night, the mm -hmm. annual uh, affair, which is always a lot of fun. Just uh, It's a big celebrity watch is what it is. Yeah, about exactly. All the great baseball players. There. Oh, that'll be fun. Yeah. Though. The weather's so nice. You know, what else we have some pictures of from San Diego? The uh, If you've ever been to SeaWorld, of course, if you've been to San Diego, I'm sure you've been to SeaWorld. Baby Shamu. We don't have pictures. Oh. We don't have the pictures this morning. Sorry about that. Anyway, let's tell you anyway. It's Baby Shamu <laughs> just <laughs> turned a year old. Hopefully we'll get this for you. And he's just a little toddler at a year old. 800 yeah, to 1,000 sure. pounds <laughs> is the estimated weight. Oh, well, we'll move along. 27 minutes now after 6 o'clock. We have a lot more news coming up for you in the second half of our show. We're going to take you to the first day of the Democratic National Convention in New York City. And some Arizona nudists celebrate the bare essentials. <laughs> <laughs> we'll tell you about it. I don't know if we're going to show you. We may not have had that video either. We'll be, we'll be right back. We counted on Medicare to take care of us. But the traditional Medicare isn't nearly enough. That's why we have FHP. To provide us the health care we need. Minor ailments, major illness, covered. Hospitalization included. Physical exams, dental options, yes. Low-cost prescriptions, of course. You have your choice of FHP primary care doctors, all carefully screened and with all, all the latest medical facilities. And with FHP Senior Plan, pay no monthly premiums and no annual deductibles. Call now to learn more about FHP Senior Plan. It's all spelled out in this free booklet, Facts You Should Know About Medicare. Call this number and we'll mail it to you in 24 hours. There's no charge. Call now to see how FHP Senior Plan can cover more than Medicare for no more than your monthly Medicare payments. FHP's taking care of us. They really are. I could see in his face the absolute pleasure he was gonna get when he killed me. He was lovesick, he was armed, and he was in their home. Points a gun right, right at me. And he says, We're all going to die in here today. A current affair brings you the story of a jilted boyfriend who seeks revenge and the one person who risked her life to stop him. Mighty Mom. Don't miss a current affair today at 4 30 on TV4. Test your memory with host Alex Trebek on Classic Concentration, weekdays at 12 30 on TV4. Good morning. Here's what's ahead in the next half hour of our show this morning. Workers are putting the final touches on New York's Madison Square Garden this morning. It's the site of the Democratic National Convention, and it gets underway today. Our Corey Warren is there now. I'll tell you what the Arizona delegation is up to in a live report from Madison Square Garden. 
We'll also tell you about more troubles in Ross Perot's Arizona headquarters. We'll also tell you what caused this fearless police dog to run for cover. All this plus today's weather forecast and sports right after this. Hello there, glad you could join us for the second half of our show. Hope you all had a great weekend because it is Monday. Today's the 13th of July, time now 6.30. And I slept with the windows open last night for you the first did. time in a while. Yeah, it was nice and cool. Oh, it was just beautiful yeah, this morning. 66 at this hour, that's just one degree uh, from a record low of 65. Humidity is 61%. Look for partly cloudy skies across Tucson today with 98 degrees for a high. We'll have more on the weather coming up in just a few minutes. As we said earlier, things are beginning to come to life this morning at Madison Square Garden in New York. 4,100 Democratic delegates from all over the country will converge in the garden later today for the opening of the party's national convention. Almost 50 of them are from Arizona, 13 from Tucson. They'll take care of a lot of business over the next four days, but yesterday it was playtime. The Arizona delegation got a chance to tour the Big Apple, although the work begins today for the Arizona delegates. It's fun for us because we've worked hard to get here. It's not like we hand this out as carte blanche. We all have to run and get elected by our peers to be a delegate. So we should also enjoy it as well. Of course, the work does begin today, but of course, they will find more time for fun as the week wears on. Our own Corey Warren is in New York today for the convention. Look out, New York. Corey Warren's uh, <laughs> loose on the streets of Manhattan. Good morning, Corey. How's everything in the Big Apple? It's going pretty well right now, so far anyway, Jimmy. Uh, I can tell you it's a lot more hectic outside uh, Madison Square Garden right now than it is inside, simply because when you add 5,000 delegates and some 15,000 journalists and thousands of others who will be on hand for this event to the normal Monday morning rush hour in Manhattan, well, it's a bit crazy outside. Inside, though, last-minute preparations indeed underway. A number of people doing various tasks this morning. Um, you can see perhaps behind me the Arizona sign. That is where the Arizona delegation will be seated this evening when this convention gets underway. This will be a busy day here in New York, but a lot of the, the work prior to this evening will be taking place behind the scenes. We can tell you a little bit about what will be happening here tonight. The convention will convene at 5 o'clock New York time with their opening ceremonies. Then Ann Richards, who made such a splash four years ago at the Democratic Convention, will be on hand to speak. Ron Brown, the uh, chairman of the National Democratic Party, will also make some remarks here. The keynote addresses tonight will come from New Jersey Senator Bill Bradley, former basketball player with the New York Knicks, and also former Texas Congresswoman Barbara Jordan. We should tell you that the uh, keynote addresses tonight and throughout the week have been limited to 12 minutes, so they'll be relatively brief, especially when you look back uh, about four years ago when Bill Clinton made a nominating speech here that went on about half an hour, and uh, the folks inside uh, the convention center then got a bit restless. Um, that's about it at this point. Uh, the Arizona delegation right now is back at the hotel. They had a 9 o'clock breakfast meeting where they were to get their marching orders. And then they do have some uh, spare time between now and this evening to attend various meetings and, uh, and have some fun, as you mentioned. And, Corey, I understand the Jerry Brown delegates may be up to something. What's that all about? Well, there is a bit of controversy. Jerry Brown wants to play a bigger role in this convention than so far he's being allowed to play. He wants to speak to the uh, delegates here at the convention. And there is talk that if he doesn't get that opportunity to speak, that uh, some of those delegates, if not all of them, he has about 600 total, may walk out. I was talking to a, a couple yesterday from Tucson who were Jerry Brown delegates, and they are very adamant. They want their, uh, their candidate to have his voices heard on any number of issues that uh, aren't included right now in the Democratic platform. And they uh, say they may very well walk out of this, uh, this room uh, later on this week. They were looking at Wednesday if Jerry Brown does not get a, a chance to speak here. Corey, thank you very much. We'll look forward to your reports all week during the Democratic National Convention. Corey Warren of New York City this morning. Back here in Arizona, more trouble brewing among supporters of undeclared candidate Ross Perot. Members of a grassroots uh, Perot group met in Phoenix yesterday. They say they don't want professionals running Perot's campaign in Arizona. Those supporters say they've done all the work. Perot's backers outside the dispute say the feud could cost Perot his chance to get on Arizona's general, electri, uh, general, electri, general election <laughs> ballot. Time now, 26 <laughs> minutes before 7 o'clock. It is Monday. It we is. can tell around here, That's can't okay. we? <laughs> <laughs> A plug for uh, what 
they own uh, NBC, I guess, or something like that. I don't know. 6.35, it's 25 minutes before 7 o'clock in Tucson right now. <laughs> Let's take a look at the weather. It's 66 degrees. 66 has been the morning low. Humidity is 61 percent. Dew point temperature is 52 degrees. Winds right now from the southeast at 9, and the barometer is 30.01 on the rise. High in Tucson yesterday, 96. The morning low this morning, 66. Let's take a look at the satellite picture, and uh, we'll get a look at uh, perhaps radar uh, across the United States at this time. Yeah, that's what we're going to look at. That's good. Because we can see these big thunder showers going through the Midwest, through Iowa and into Illinois again today, out of Michigan and into Pennsylvania and New York. They will continue to move in that direction today. And they may even come, become very severe through parts of Indiana and into Ohio today and as they push into the western part of Pennsylvania and into New York State. Uh, let's take a look at what the weather is going to be across the country today. The biggest chance of thunder showers, again, is across the Midwestern part of the United States. Um, there we go, back to nighttime. But you can see this low pressure area here with the fronts uh, moving with it will move across Indiana and Illinois and into Ohio today. That's the best chance of getting thunder showers. El Paso today, if you're heading there, 95 degrees and partly cloudy skies, nothing like the 108, 109 degrees that they were looking at uh, last week. Des Moines, Iowa, some thunder showers today, 82 degrees, the expected high in 64 for a low this evening, and then 91 degrees in Cincinnati, pretty humid, hot in that part of the country, and partly cloudy skies today. To the north of there, they will be getting some thunder showers. Partly cloudy across Arizona, but the northern part of the state, the northern one-third of Arizona, is going to be looking at thunderstorm action today, and some of it could be very heavy, especially on the northwest plateau and up uh, to the north of the Grand Canyon. Partly cloudy in Tucson today, about 90 98 degrees, our expected high, partly cloudy tonight with 67, just a slight chance of getting a late afternoon or evening thunder shower. And then tomorrow up to 100 degrees, and again, partly cloudy skies. I think a little lull in the monsoon for the next four or five days. We'll get the moisture back in here, but it's dried out a little bit. Okay, time now, 636. Just ahead for you, some heavy rains hit hard over the weekend in Agua Prieta. And a day in jail for a heavy metal rock star. But first, here's last night's winning lotto numbers. Good luck. To know just how good Tony Roma's half slab rib dinner really is, you gotta find out firsthand. Go on and grab me some ribs and hold on tight. Get me some ribs at Tony Roma's tonight. Tony Roma's half slab, your choice of our tender baby backs or meaty St. Louis style ribs, all for a special low price. Just pick them up and hold on tight. Gonna grab me some Tony Roma's ribs tonight. Tony Roma's, the ultimate hands on experience. Everyone's talking about Saturn of Tucson. The reason I chose Saturn was that it was the best looking, best driving uh, car in its price range. I shopped around for about six months and uh, looked at a lot, a lot of different makes and models and the Saturn took the cake by far. A Saturn dealership is not a low pressure environment, it's a no pressure environment. Come see why everyone's talking about Saturn of Tucson. Introducing new Ocean Spray Refreshers. Finally, adults have a juice drink of their own. Refreshers aren't sticky sweet like kids' juice drinks. Cross this and we'll pass. New Refreshers are never too sweet. Refreshers have a crisp, light, dry taste adults crave. Daddy? Dad? And new Refreshers come in three delicious flavors adults find hard to share. Try new Ocean Spray Refreshers juice drinks. Not too sweet taste for adults only. There's something happening late at night that you should know about. NBC Nightside, bringing you the very latest in local, national, and world news. Plus sports, entertainment, and interviews. It's news overnight, all night, six nights a week. Even more news from KVOA TV4 and NBC Nightside. Once again, leaving no doubt that now, more than ever, this is where the news comes first. 639, 21 before 7 o'clock. Welcome back to Daybreak. More than 700 people in Agua Prieta, Mexico, are homeless this morning, victims of flooding over the weekend. Most of the damage is in the floodplain south and east of the city, where more than 10,000 people have homes built in the washes. About half of the victims are being sheltered in a school, but 
A lot of residents are refusing to leave the area for fear of losing their belongings. A lost police dog in Glendale is reunited with his partner. Rocky escaped from his master's yard on Friday night after getting spooked by some thunderstorms. He turned up yesterday morning about 10 miles from home. Officer Steve Sheffo says he's glad he's got his partner in crime fighting back home with him. We'll go him. back to work here shortly and start back at it. Of course, he looks a little tired right now, so I'll give him a couple of days to rest and get back at it. Rocky's work includes sniffing out drugs and, ironically, tracking people. Hmm. Police in New York tracked down heavy metal singer Axl Rose yesterday. The lead singer of Guns N' Roses was arrested on charges stemming from a riot at a St. Louis concert last year. Rose spent nearly 11 hours in custody. Police released the singer on $100,000 bond. Uh, Rose uh, faces jail time and fines on assault and property damage charges. South of Flagstaff, a week of roughing it in the buff is underway. The Canyon State Naturists are getting naked to celebrate Nude Recreation Week. We'll have the video here in a second. <laughs> Members say that many people believe there should be special places set aside for nude rec... Where's the video? Nude recreation so that nudists can enjoy Arizona's raw beauty. We Sorry. really, We really didn't have any videos scheduled <laughs> for that. Thank goodness. <laughs> Time now, 641. Doug Mance fully clothed. will be joining us in just a minute. Thank heavens. <laughs> I think he is. He'll have the latest numbers from Wall Street. Plus, Doug will be talking live with Arizona Congressman Jim Colby about the free trade agreement with Mexico. So stay with us. Like to watch TV even in school? If you do, maybe your school should get involved with cable in the classroom. A number of the cable channels like Arts and Entertainment, the Disney Channel, Home Box Office, and Cable News Network have made a commitment to education and put on programs for classroom use. Cable in the classroom is commercial free, and the teacher has a, the option to choose from a variety of programs and when they will be viewed. For more information on teaming up your school with this contemporary resource, call Jones Intercable at 744-2653. This is Christine Vitale from Line River School for News for Kids. It's 9 o'clock and the Summer Olympics are underway. At Jim's Place, they're into boxing. At the Lions, basketball. Peg and Dave's, gymnastics. But how are they watching three different events at the same time? Introducing the Olympics TripleCast. Three exclusive cable channels, each televising different events simultaneously. Live with no interruptions. Switch back and forth between events as you please. But to get TripleCast, you have to order the TripleCast. Call 1-800-OLYMPIC. You'll save money, too, because a full day of uninterrupted viewing is regularly $29.95. But if you call now, you'll enjoy 15 days for less than $9 a day. That's a 70% savings. So instead of watching just part of the Olympics, you can choose to see it all live on three cable channels. The choice is yours. The choice is TripleCast. Call 1-800-OLYMPIC now. We're talking superstar whose rhythm is going to get you. Gloria Estefan. How did that accident change your life? It really set my priorities straight. What did it teach you? It taught me a lot of things about love. And it's shining did you ever dream of it going this far? I didn't dream of it going at all. Get on her feet. Get on her feet. And that she did. Gloria Estefan on Christina. <laughs> Today at 9 a.m. on TV4. No, 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 no. That is good. A laughing impression. Watch the Cosby Show. Glad you're with us. It is Monday morning time now, just about 6:44. That's right. Doug uh, Mance joins us now. Where is he? Here oh, I here am. Here. <laughs> over here. Oh, okay. Sorry. Oh, here's the over there. We, we have a special guest. That's when, uh, whenever okay. I said over here, that's the cue. We have a special guest okay. this morning, and, okay. and we're going to be talking a little bit about the uh, the North, North American Free Trade Agreement. Good. But let's see what the numbers are, are giving us uh, on Wall Street this morning. And, uh, and, and we're not doing the weather, we're doing the numbers on Wall Street. And uh, we, uh, we have uh, the, the, the Dow up this morning strongly, up 6.5%. 
volume there, 6.2 million shares. NASDAQ also up 1.4. And uh, that, is, that puts the NASDAQ index at 569.2 volume there, 2.7 million shares. Now, the bond market's taking some profits this morning. That 30-year uh, Treasury is down 1030 seconds, uh, puts the 30-year bond at 103 and 2530 seconds. When the bond price goes down, the yield comes up 7.65%. Now, it may have seemed like we were busy uh, last week, but we were not. And uh, as we can see from our recap graphic this morning, we have a, uh, a, a gain on the Dow of about a quarter of one point. So all, all kinds of volume and no place to go. We, <laughs> we went virtually nowhere during the course of the week. Might as well just taking the week off and taking a vacation. Well, right? it seemed busy, though, didn't it? Yeah, yeah. it did. <laughs> it seemed real busy. <laughs> yeah. uh, this morning, joining us live, we have, uh, we have Con Congressman Jim Colby, and he's, he's going to be talking uh, a little bit about the North American Free Trade Agreement. Con Congressman Colby, good morning. Good morning, Doug. Thanks for joining us this morning. Could you firstly, uh, could you bring us up to speed just uh, on just where we are uh, as far as on the timeline uh, towards this North American Free Trade Agreement? Well, we're still in the uh, process of negotiations. Uh, there's no set timeline to finish those, and I've said so many times that I thought they were going to be finished with the next three weeks or month that I'm reluctant to make a prediction, but they are very close. There's still a couple of key issues, one on uh, energy and another on the agricultural tariffs that's outstanding. Uh, but I expect that they will wrap those up uh, certainly this summer and have the draft agreement done. Then there's several steps that follow after that. It has to be submitted to Congress for 90 days, and only after that can the presidents of the three countries or the prime minister of Canada and the other two presidents sign the agreement and then it gets submitted to Congress for the implementing legislation to be enacted. So that won't come till next year. Congressman, there seems to be a lot of fear, especially among labor unions, that this free trade agreement will cause a loss of American jobs. Is that going to happen? No, I don't think it uh, will happen that way. In fact, I think it will be quite the opposite. Uh, we're already seeing a tremendous surge in jobs in the United States that have come as a result of exports. In fact, 70% of the growth of jobs we've had since 1987 have been due to exports. And if you look around uh, to countries like Japan and the, in the European community, they're not maybe not stagnant markets, but they're certainly not rapidly growing markets. Uh, Mexico and Latin America represents the fastest growing market in the world, uh, and the United States needs to position itself to take advantage of that. We're already selling uh, this last year $32 billion of goods to Mexico. Uh, that means that translates into several hundred thousand jobs in the United States, and more trade will mean more jobs. And Congressman, can we talk about the environmental concerns as a direct result of a free trade agreement? Pesticide abuses, illegal dumping, things like that. Well, the environmental concerns are very real, and we all have good reason to be concerned about those. Uh, but I would uh, caution about saying as a direct result of the free trade agreement, we have those environmental concerns now as a result of the uh, amount of, of traffic and, uh, and trade and business that's going on along the border, and they're going to increase. Uh, those environmental concerns, but they're going to increase with or without a free trade agreement. Mm -hmm. So free trade agreement helps to give us the framework to solve those problems, and, and I'm uh, confident that the two countries are going to, th there's a strong commitment on both sides of the border to solving these problems. We need to find some funds, too, to do it. Congressman, we, we thank you for your time this morning. This is a very interesting issue. Thank, thank you for sharing with us. Thank you. Thank you, Congressman. All right. Great. Great. Doug, thank you very much. Sure, we'll see you tomorrow sure. over there. Okay. Yeah, I'm that's lonely right. over here. <laughs> okay. I don't like this. At all. Thanks a lot. That was very interesting. <laughs> Twelve minutes now before seven o'clock. Just ahead for you, a trip to the Gateway of the West. And the All-Star Game is coming up tomorrow. There's a break today, but uh, all the major league teams got in their last licks yesterday. We'll take a look at the scores. Stay with us. You know, if you're lucky enough to win lotto, you too could be living the good life. You know, have a nice house, drive expensive cars. Oh, thanks. Wear really great clothes. Ahoy there. Have great parties. <laughs> you know which car it is. Lotto. New name, better game. Nice scarf. Thank you. I really should play more. <laughs> Across the continent, anywhere you go, you'll find Remax sold signs. Because all over North America, Remax sales associates have been selling real estate for a long time. 
houses, commercial properties, land. REMAX Sales Associates average nearly 10 years of real estate experience. That's why the properties we list sell. After you read the signs, the choice is clear. Above the crowd. says there are no heroes. What about the guy who treats a fender like modern art? And all the ones who never call the game on account of weather. There are people who make things perfect a thousand times a day. And if Bank of America can help with the money, keep things safe, save them some time, then they can go on doing the really important things. Banking on America. Bank of America. On the next Golden Girls. Blanche Devereaux's going on a diet. Could you hold off until tomorrow? I got some Sara Lee stock I'd like to unload. She's determined to lose weight. Are you sure it's worth it? But Rose gets the munchies. I said, where's my tuna quiche? You mean that little pie? And Blanche gets the crazies. You hate my festival meal. You hate my festival meal. Blanche, <laughs> you're out of control. What did I just do? Yes. <laughs> Tonight at 6.30 on TV4. We have nine minutes before 7 o'clock. Welcome back to Daybreak, and uh, it's only 66 degrees. We'll take a final look at the weather in just a moment. Time now to take another look at our top stories of the day for you. The work begins this morning for nearly 50 Arizona delegates to the Democratic National Convention in New York City. Speeches and meetings will fill up much of the week. Thirteen members of the Arizona delegation are from Tucson. Meanwhile, supporters of undeclared candidate Ross Perot are becoming more and more divided Members of a grassroots pro group met in Phoenix yesterday. They say they don't want professionals to step in and run Perot's Arizona campaign. Perot backers outside the dispute say the feud could cost Perot his chance at getting on the state's general election ballot. Well, the All-Star game this year is just about as close as it can get and still be in a major league park. It's over in San Diego. Ooh, and I would imagine... Those roads are going to be packed on the way to California. Well, you wonder how many people have tickets. They're kind of hard to get. Mm, that's <laughs> true. If you have some special connections, I know some people that have special connections, and they, they'll make it over. It's raining in Southern California today, but it should be okay tomorrow. We're looking partly cloudy skies over there. The baseball season reached its traditional halfway point yesterday as the ball players will begin a three-day break for the All-Star game. Plenty of action yesterday. The Cubs had lost three straight to Atlanta and had the bases loaded with nobody out and the game tied in the ninth, but they couldn't get a run across. But in the top of the 10th, Jeff Blauser gave him a chance to hit his third homer of the game for the Braves in the top of the 10th. He came through with a three-run shot to win it for Atlanta 7-4. In Cincinnati, the Reds had the late inning blues as well. Barry Bonds hit a ninth inning, two out bases loaded triple to bring the Tigers even with Cincinnati. Then Gary Reedus pounded a two-run homer in the 10th to win it for Pittsburgh. Elsewhere, Houston beat the Mets. The Dodgers' Kevin Gross shut out the St. Louis Cardinals to end L.A.'s 18-day uh, homestand. San Diego beat the Phillies, and the Giants shut out Montreal. In the American League, the A's' Ron Darling threw a two-hitter at Toronto. Tom Bernanski and Bob uh, Zupcic <laughs> homered uh, for the Red Sox to beat the Pale Sox. California edged Detroit. The Seattle Mariners edged the Yankees. Kevin Apier pitched the Royals past the Brewers. Mark Witten slammed a three-run homer that lifted the Indians over Texas. It was the first loss for new Ranger manager or interim manager, Toby Hara. And Minnesota outslugged the Baltimore Orioles. The Toros lost to the Phoenix Firebirds 5-3 out at High Corbett Field last night. Matt Turner took the loss for Pittsburgh. He only pitched one-third of an inning in relief, but he gave up four runs on three hits. Some two and a half million tourists will visit the St. Louis Arch this year. Travel reporter Ricky Stevenson says if you plan to be one of them, don't miss a ride to the top of this national monument that's been the city symbol for 26 years. It's the tallest of America's national monuments. Taller than the Washington Monument and the Statue of Liberty. Even taller than Egypt's Great Pyramid. Jefferson National Expansion Memorial, better known as the Gateway Arch, a stainless steel marvel rising over St. Louis on the Mississippi Riverfront. At the base of the arch, a museum and park rangers fill you in on historic St. Louis and its role in building the West. The land we're standing on until 1803 was actually part of France. After we purchased Louisiana territory, this was the natural starting point for all the westward expansion. But the most interesting part of this monument is the trip to the top. 
You'll enter what feels like a little space capsule. Then it's a four-minute ride, 630 feet up to the top of the arch. There's only one way up, by tram. Not a trip for the claustrophobic or for anyone with a fear of heights. But for the fearless... You get uh, a very spectacular view of the city of St. Louis and across the river in Illinois. Well, the first time I saw it, I flew over and I thought it was great, and I wanted to see it. And uh, now that I'm in it, I was, I'm real happy that I got to see it. I'm just amazed. The tram to the top of Gateway Arch operates seven days a week, 8 a.m. to 9 p.m. until Labor Day. The cost is $2.50 for adults, 50 cents for kids, plus a $1 park fee. For Daybreak, Ricky Stevenson, TV4 Eyewitness News. When I was a kid, we used to go to St. Louis, and it was kind of, I always thought, kind of a dirty city, but they have really cleaned up their act. It it's is a neat pretty city, city now, it really know. is. A lot of things to do there. Five minutes before 7 o'clock, we could get a little break from the monsoon today. Jimmy will explain in his forecast when we come back. The latest dance craze on A Closer Look with host Faith Daniels, today at 10.30 on TV4. During most of the 70s, all of the 80s, and now into the 90s, I've had the privilege of providing legal services to personal injury clients in Tucson. During this time, there have been many changes in the law, but some things never change. Every client has the right to personal attention and concern from an experienced lawyer. I'm Leighton Rockefeller. If you or a loved one have been injured and you think someone else is at fault, call the Rockefeller Law Firm. We will give you the personal attention and concern that you deserve. The Rockefeller Law Firm, lawyers you can depend on. There's a fire that burns in the soul of every athlete who aspires to the dream. A burning inspiration to run swifter, jump higher, be stronger. More than ever before, celebrate the triumph of the human spirit in the crucible of athletic competition. The 1992 Summer Olympic Games, brought to you locally by these sponsors. Have you ever wondered why Delectables is called the casual gourmet dining experience? The warm and cozy atmosphere provides the ideal setting to enjoy some of the most palate-pleasing hot entrees, many never before available. Hot gourmet delights on the menu at Delectables for lunch or dinner. Served by well-trained and attentive waiters, at Delectables, you're always welcome, dressy or casual. Delectables Restaurant, 533 North 4th Avenue. It's a casual gourmet dining experience. It's Monday morning, time now, three minutes before 7 o'clock. And 66 degrees in Tucson, that's been our morning low so far, but we could actually drop to 65, which would be a record low. Humidity is 61%, dew point is 52 degrees. Winds right now for the southeast at 9, the barometer is 30.01, it is on the rise. Let's take a look at travel weather at this time. Let's stick locally. There's a chance of getting some thunder showers here in the, in the northern part of Arizona. The northern one-third of Arizona is looking at a chance of some fairly heavy thunder showers. Not much of a chance down here. We're going to stay pretty dry. Some showers in Southern California today. They've had rain over the last few days. Las Vegas at 92 degrees for a high. And over in New Mexico, El Paso cooling down a little bit, but still at 95. But Albuquerque down to 87 after being in the upper 90s for a while. Here in the southeastern corner, mostly in the 80s and 90s, the deserts will get into the 100s. We'll stay out of them here in Tucson. Partly cloudy, about 98 for a high, 67 for a low this evening. Five-day forecast not including any thunder showers, although a few could develop in the afternoon. But they're going to be widely scattered, and I think things have dried out a little bit. A little uh, reprieve from the monsoon for a while. If that's good, that's not good for me. Drag the cereal outside this morning. Enjoy it. Today's show's coming up next. Oh, okay. Nice weather. I get it. <laughs> Escort owners are so low.